Welcome back to our video module on mechanics and materials. In our previous video, we started to look at the relationship between stress and strain. And we saw that there was this plastic and elastic region of materials and they act very differently. So the elastic was a nice linear relationship and the plastic, we have no idea what's happening. I'd like to play a little bit with that. Now I wanna go back to here where we're talking about some sort of spring. We've used this as an analogy. And I said that if we take this relationship right here where we're stretching the spring, once we go beyond really the elastic threshold of the spring, weird things may start happening. And that really depends on what the spring's like. But one of the things we notice is that when we release the spring, the resting length is now different. We can feel that it's stretched. It's gone into a plastic region. Well, what does that look like? Over here, if we pretend we're a material, we're going to stretch, stretch, stretch. And then once we hit this plastic deformation, so we're gonna keep on stretching this material and it's stretching plastically. So it's not following the nice linear rules. Our Young's modulus doesn't apply. It's something's happening inside there. We don't have to pull as hard to get the same type of deformation, but now we're going to stop. We're going to remove the applied stress and watch what happens. As you remove the stress, slowly and slowly, you're removing the stress. It follows the exact same slope as what we saw in the elastic region. But now that the stress has been released, we see that there's some sort of plastic deformation. So in this case, we can start applying stress and we'll see that it follows the same slope as what we saw in the elastic region over here. And in fact, we are in an elastic region. The relationship between the stress and the new change strain is the same slope. The Young's modulus rule applies as long as we recognize that there's some sort of offset here. Finally, as we move along this line far enough, we're applying higher and higher stresses. Our strains are getting higher and higher Eventually, the material simply can handle it and we get failure. Now, at this point, we've taken a quick look at the stress strain diagram. In fact, there's all sorts of neat things that materials do that we can illustrate using this diagram. And at a later time, I might include those as side notes in these videos. So hopefully this gives you a basic idea of how to use the stress strain diagram to illustrate different characteristics that materials have when a load is applied. Thank you for joining me and we'll continue our discussion in the next video.